Hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video I'm going to explain you more about uh, coroutine scopes, what they are and how they actually work. So uh, if you haven't watched my previous video about uh, coroutine basics, then uh, I highly suggest you to do that before you continue watching this one, because uh, there I have explained everything you need to know before you start working with uh, coroutines. Okay, so uh, the first thing you need to know is that uh, every coroutine needs to run inside uh, some scope and uh, we cannot run a coroutine routines without a coroutine scope. So a coroutine scope is a way to keep track of uh, all coroutines that uh, runs inside it. So a uh, coroutine scope uh, takes coroutine context as a parameter and the coroutine context is a set of uh, various elements and the main elements of a uh, coroutine context are the job of the coroutine, its uh, dispatcher and the coroutine name. So I'm going to talk about the jobs uh, separately in some of the future videos but for now we're going to focus only on uh, coroutine scopes. So uh, coroutine scope and uh, coroutine context are uh, closely related and you can say that the coroutine scope uh, formalizes the way the coroutine context is uh, inherited. So uh, for example, when a coroutine is launched inside the coroutine scope of another coroutine, it uh, inherits its context and the job of the new coroutine becomes a child job of the parent coroutine. So when the parent coroutine is cancelled, all its children are uh, cancelled as well. And the parent coroutine always waits for completion of uh, all its children by default. Now uh, you might have already heard about uh, global scope and the global scope is uh, used to launch uh, top level coroutines and it lives as long as the whole application lives, which means if we use global scope for example in fragment or activity, it will not be cancelled even the fragment or activity is destroyed. So now you can assume that that this can lead to memory leaks. So uh, bottom line, the main point is that uh, each coroutine scope should be tied to a specific application component lifecycle and uh, even though the coroutine scope itself uh, provides a proper way to cancel long running operations automatically, there are already some built-in coroutine scopes which you should use on a regular basis. And uh, those scopes are a lifecycle scope and a view model scope. So uh, as the name suggests, the first one, lifecycle scope, can be used inside activities and fragments and uh, it's tied to their life cycles. And the second one, uh, view model scope, is uh, used in view models and it's tied to a life cycle of a view model of course. So uh, behind the scenes uh, they handle all the cancellation automatically. So uh, for example whenever we use uh, view model scope it uh, automatically cleans up after itself when uh, on cleared method is called. So we don't have to worry about memory leaks anymore. Okay so uh, enough theory and uh, now we're going to open up uh, Android Studio and I'm going to show you some uh, practical examples. So here I have created uh, just a simple project, so I have one activity and two fragments and as you can see this is the first and default uh, destination inside my navigation graph. So uh, here we have our first fragment and when I press go button it will go to this uh, second fragment and when I press this uh, back button it will go back to our first fragment. And I'm going to use that to show you uh, some examples a little bit later. But before that I'm going to show you how to create uh, your own uh, coroutine scope. So inside this fragment I'm going to show you how to create one. So basically all you need to do is just create a simple variable. So uh, I'm going to name this variable scope. And uh, here I'm going to use uh, coroutine scope. Okay, so here as you can see inside this uh, coroutine scope we only need to pass a coroutine context. And uh, as I already mentioned coroutine context is a set of elements and the coroutine context uh, contains uh, the actual job object then a dispatcher and a coroutine name. So here uh, we don't need to specify the first two, we can only for example specify the one. So I'm going to specify here a coroutine name and I'm going to name this uh, scope for example my scope. And if I don't specify the actual dispatcher here, then it will use a default one. And basically with just uh, one variable we have created our scope, our coroutine scope. And now for example inside this uh, onCreateView method I can just uh, call this scope and I can call the extension function named the launch to launch a coroutine, okay? So inside this uh, coroutine I can just type for example uh, log to log the actual uh, message. So I'm going to write here uh, coroutine and for the actual value I'm going to use uh, this dot uh, coroutine context and basically I'm going to uh, log this uh, coroutine context. So let's run the app and let's open up our uh, log cat so you can see the actual value. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we have logged our coroutine context 
and here as you can see uh, first we have our name of our coroutine or our scope so the name of our scope is uh, my scope as we have already defined inside our uh, scope uh, variable on the top then here uh, we have a job and this is the actual uh, and unique id of our uh, coroutine job and of course uh, this uh, is the actual dispatcher so as you can see uh, we are using this default dispatcher because we haven't specified the actual uh, dispatcher which we want to use and for example we can specify here a different dispatcher so i can write here uh, dispatchers.io uh, for example and here uh, we don't need to add comma uh, we just need to add a plus symbol so like that and that's how we are specifying the actual coroutine uh, context so basically we can specify this dispatcher then plus and the coroutine name okay so i can set here this variable to private okay so now let's run the app again and you will see that now this uh, dispatcher will change because we have changed this uh, dispatcher inside our uh, coroutine scope on the top and now as you can see this dispatcher is using uh, this uh, dispatcher io and uh, now you see how easy it is to actually create uh, your own coroutine scope but of course uh, you would need to cancel this uh, coroutine scope by yourself and i'm going to talk about uh, coroutine cancellations and uh, coroutine jobs in some of the next videos but for now we're going to only focus on uh, scopes so for example uh, inside this uh, coroutine builder launch i'm going to add uh, one more uh, coroutine so let's use this uh, launch uh, builder and and here I'm going to log uh, basically the same thing. So here I'm going to write uh, coroutine. And here I'm going to write uh, this dot uh, coroutine context. Okay. So let's uh, run the app now. And let's open up the logcat. So now you can see we have uh, basically nested this uh, new coroutine inside this uh, first coroutine. So as you can see here uh, both our coroutines are using the same scope. And it's because uh, this uh, second coroutine has inherited this uh, scope from our first uh, coroutine builder. And the only difference here is that we have a new ID for our coroutine job. So basically a job is a simple object and uh, every launch uh, coroutine builder is returning a job object. So I'm going to show you that. So for example, let's create this uh, variable named uh, variable. And you will see that the type of this variable uh, will be a job object, okay? And the job is a cancelable thing with a life cycle that uh, culminates in uh, its completion and uh, jobs can be arranged into a parent child hierarchies where cancellation of a parent uh, leads to uh, immediate cancellation of all its uh, children so uh, basically a job is responsible for uh, coroutines life cycle cancellation and uh, parent child relations so we can rename this variable now to job so basically uh, every coroutine uh, builder launch will return a job object and we can use this uh, job to actually cancel our coroutine but of course i'm not going to talk about uh, jobs in this video so i'm going to skip that for now okay so now you saw how to create your own uh, coroutine scope and now i'm going to show you how to use a global scope so uh, for example we're going to uh, delete this uh, scope here and i'm going to call a uh, global scope dot launch so as I already mentioned, this uh, global scope uh, will live as long as our application lives. So I'm going to prove you that. And uh, here inside our global scope, I'm going to write uh, something different. So I'm going to write here uh, while is true. So basically I'm going to create an infinite loop here. And I'm going to add uh, one delay function of uh, one second. Okay, so just like that. And here I'm going to just uh, say, for example, uh, running. So now uh, every second uh, this log uh, will be executed and uh, you will see that uh, even if we destroy our fragment this uh, coroutine will run and now basically I'm going to override a few methods so I'm going to override uh, on pause I'm going to override uh, on stop method then uh, I'm going to override on resume and of course at the end uh, on destroy okay so now inside each and every function here I'm going to add uh, one log uh, statement so here I'm going to basically uh, type here uh, on pause and I'm going to copy that right here and change uh, to on stop then here uh, to on resume then uh, down below on destroy okay so let's run our app and let's see uh, what will happen so the first function which was called was on resume then uh, we have this uh, running log running each and every second and even if we navigate to our second fragment as you can see on pause and on stop were called and even then uh, this uh, coroutine continues to run so as you can see running a log uh, each and every second so uh, on destroy method was not called because our first fragment was not destroyed and now let's try and destroy it so we can see if uh, our global scope will still run in the background so i'm going to go to this uh, navigation graph and now i'm going to select this arrow which is pointing from the first fragment to the second fragment 
and here where it says a pop behavior I'm going to select first fragment and here I'm going to check this option to true okay and now basically when we run our application and when we navigate to this uh, second fragment then this first fragment will be destroyed so now let's check that out and let's run our app again okay so as you can see the first method was called on resume then we have this uh, running then running every second so now let's go to our second fragment and let's see what will happen okay so on pause on stop and on destroy so now basically our first fragment was actually destroyed but still our coroutine is running in the background so as you can see this uh, global scope coroutine actually lives as long as our application lives and now when we get back to our uh, first fragment as you can see the first fragment will be recreated once again so now you saw in this uh, practical example that uh, global scope actually lives as long as our application lives okay so now uh, i'm going to show you how to use the life cycle scope and for life cycle scope you need to have uh, one specific dependency so as you can see uh, you need to have those two dependencies for coroutines and if you want to use a life cycle scope then you should have this uh, implementation or this dependency and for a view model scope uh, you should have uh, this one okay so i'm going to put this source code uh, on my github profile so you can download or copy those uh, dependencies and now uh, we're going to use a life cycle scope and you will see that uh, that uh, our uh, coroutine will actually uh, cancel when we actually destroy our uh, first fragment so now instead of this uh, global scope i'm going to use a uh, a live cycle scope okay so this one and now let's run our application again we're not going to change anything and now let's see uh, what will happen if we navigate from our first fragment to the second fragment so let's run the app let's open up this logcat okay so uh, as before we have received this uh, on resume first then our coroutine is uh, running freely and now let's try navigating to our second fragment and let's see if this coroutine will still be running so as you can see on pause on stop and on destroy were called and uh, our coroutine actually stopped and uh, basically uh, that's the proof that our live cycle scope is actually cleaning up uh, after itself so whenever our fragment is destroyed the coroutines will be cancelled automatically and this also applies the same to a uh, view model scope as well and uh, view model scope will cancel itself after on cleared method is called so uh, the best practice is that you should always use a live cycle scope and a view model scope wherever is possible and you also saw how you can create your own uh, custom scopes so basically you just need to use this uh, coroutine scope and of course inside this uh, constructor you can pass uh, different kind of elements and we have passed here the actual dispatcher the coroutine name and we can also pass the actual job okay so uh, that will be all for this video write down in the comments if you want to see more videos about uh, kotlin coroutines please like this video if you find it helpful of course and uh, see you in the next one